Hello, greetings, uh, God's people, wherever you are. Uh, this is Ondigo Ocheng. Ondigo Ocheng. Ondigo Ocheng is from Kenya, uh, border between Kenya and Tanzania, Kehancha. I thank God for giving you uh, and me an opportunity, a very wonderful opportunity. This is a good day that the Lord has made, and we have every good reason to thank God. I know wherever you are, you are watching me here. I must say that uh, God is good. And he has given us a chance uh, to share in uh, the spiritual food, a very delicious meal. That is uh, uh, the meal uh, that uh, uh, will uh, build you uh, uh, in all spheres of life. And here I want to uh, have a series of teachings that will take very few minutes every now and then. And I think you will be with me watching every now and then as I uh, upload a video on this and uh, uh, you will be blessed uh, as you watch. And uh, uh, what I'm going to discuss in this series of teaching is uh, the key to understanding God's master plan of uh, salvation uh, to humankind. Now, it will go as a series of teachings. So uh, I urge you to uh, keep on watching and maybe subscribe to my YouTube video and uh, enjoy. And uh, I thank God that uh, you will pray I know you will take time to pray uh, so that uh, God gives you wisdom and knowledge and understanding uh, that will equip you uh, for uh, every good work uh, when you are Christian and you want to uh, be uh, 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 on the way. Now, I will start by praying. Our mighty and everlasting Father, King of Kings and Lord of Lords and the King of Salem, our Jesus Christ, Yeshua, our Master. Thank you very much, uh, Father, for this opportunity that you've given me, maybe to share this uh, wonderful, uh, delicious meal. As we are, I'm going to share, Father, I know it's going to be a blessing for those who are uh, going to listen to this. And they're going to take it and meditate on it. And maybe, Father, they will uh, uh, follow it and believe in it. Father, extend your blessings to those who are going to uh, hear this message so that you may give them a lot of uh, understanding. Uh, Father, as I'm going to do this, Father, may you use me as an instrument of honor. I pray, trusting and believing in Yeshua's name. Amen. Now, uh, today I want to start this series of uh, the teaching. I've said uh, uh, the main topic that I'm going to discuss uh, in series is... Um, the key to understand God's master plan for the salvation of humankind. Now, we know that um, uh, the Savior is our God and Jesus Christ, our um, Savior. And because all of us are Christians and we want, to, uh, want, uh, we want to inherit eternal life, know very well that eternal life starts from now. It starts from now. How does it start from now? Because everybody who will be saved or who is going to be saved or who has been saved now wants to enjoy the eternal life. And some of you think that eternal life will start when after Jesus had ca has come, uh, maybe in, uh, in the future. No. Uh, when we read the book of uh, uh, John chapter 17, that's where we are going to start so that you can see what is the meaning. What is the meaning of eternal life? Now, in... Um, John chapter 17 verse 3, it says, And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. So, the eternal life is knowing God himself, that is Jehovah or Yahweh, and Yeshua or Jesus Christ, whom God sent. So, that is the eternal life. So, if you know God, if you know Jesus Christ, now that is eternal life. And... Uh, for we are being told in John chapter 3, I think uh, it's a verse that most of the people know. We were taught in Sabbath school and Sunday school. All of us know it in John chapter 3 verse 16. It says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So uh, God is love and he loved the whole world. So he gave his only one son, only one begotten son, uh, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Um, 
in verse, I mean verse 17, the Bible continues to tell us in verse 17 that for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. So most people do say that I know Christ, I'm born again, Christ is my savior, I love Jesus Christ. You see, um, if you look at this, you find that there have uh, seen that there are two types of Jesus, two types of Messiah in the Bible. Uh, if you look at this Bible, you will find that there is a, uh, the Jesus of the Bible. And there is the Jesus that every common Christian knew. So there are two types of Jesus. Do you know Jesus? That is a question that you should ask yourself. Do you really know Jesus of the Bible? Do you really know Jesus of the Bible? Because we are told in the Bible here that Jesus Christ is a mystery to so many, many, many Christians. If you go to the book of Colossians, I think we want to read from there so that we can see what the Bible is trying to tell us about the Jesus of the Bible, Yeshua in Hebrew language. The Jesus of the Bible uh, it says in uh, Colossians chapter 1 and I think verse 26, it says the mystery which has been hidden from ages and from generations, but now has been revealed to his saints. You see, there is a mystery that has been hidden from ages. It has been revealed from people. People don't know it. Even the scholars, those who, have, uh, who are learned, do not know Jesus. Those who have studied theology do not know this Jesus, but he has been revealed to the saints. And I think verse 27 says, to them, God, it says verse 26, the mystery which has been hidden from ages and from generations, but now has been revealed to his saints. To them, God uh, willed to make known what are the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles? You see, this mystery has been extended to be revealed to Gentiles like maybe me and you. Uh, you me and you uh, did not know Jesus Christ, but the, uh, God through his love has extended uh, this mystery to the Gentiles. And this is what the Bible is trying to say in uh, that same verse 27 which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. So, Christ in you, the hope of glory. That is the mystery. So, when you are reading it from up there, you didn't know that this Jesus is a mystery. The Jesus here is, is the mystery that has been hidden. In fact, even now, it has been hidden because throughout the ages means that the ages are still continuing and many people do not know this Jesus and in fact, this Jesus, even during the time he took three and a half years in this world doing his ministry, people did not know him. Most people did not know him. The Pharisees, the Sadducees, the Jews, all these people did not know Jesus Christ. It reached a time when uh, uh, some of them... Uh, the scribes, they came to him and asked him a question they, because they did not, they wanted to, to know when, whether he is uh, uh, the Jesus uh, or the, is the Messiah. So uh, I think if you read the book of Matthew chapter 12, uh, the book of Matthew chapter 12, I think we are going to read it from verses 38, uh, where the, whereby it says, Then some of the scribes and Pharisees answered, saying, Teacher, we want to see a sign from you. I want to tell you that these people, it's not that they did not see signs from Jesus Christ. Jesus had performed several miracles. He had performed wonders. He had performed, he had given them signs, a lot of it. But these people still did not believe. They still just wanted something to pin Jesus Christ. But now, because Jesus knew them, Jesus knew their in, in intent. He knew their thoughts. Now see the way Jesus was now answering them because it's not that Jesus had not given them the sign or the, maybe the miracles or maybe the uh, call it. But um, in verse 
39. But he answered and said to them, An evil and adulterous generation seeks after a sign, and uh, no sign will be given to it except the sign of the prophet Jonah. So the Jesus of the Bible told them that I will not give you sign. There is only one thing that is remaining for me to verify that I am the Messiah because you people don't believe me if I paraphrase it. So there is only one sign remaining. That is the sign of the prophet Jonah. Because the adulterous generation, they were seeking after sign. And let me tell you, nowadays we are in the full, full, I can say it is now time for these people who are adulterous. They want to see sign. They want to see wonders. They are being deceived left and right because to them, Jesus is just a Jesus of making people rich, making people prosper, making people become wealthy. That is the Jesus they know. Uh, in this generation we are staying, this generation we are living, this generation that is uh, uh, we are living now is a very, very adulterous generation because they want to see sign. Uh, if you are a person who can give lying wonders or signs or miracles or something like that, they will flock because they want it. But here, Jesus is telling them something here uh, that um, for as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the great fish, so will the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. So as Jonah was three days, in fact, uh, here Jesus Christ was very specific. Three days and three nights. So for us, Jonah, you look, you see, if you read the story of Jonah, Jonah was sent to Nineveh uh, to tell them, the people of Nineveh, uh, their transgression. But he refused to go there. He refused to go to Nineveh. And God had to punish him. Uh, so here, this is what happened. And I think if we read the book of Jonah, uh, we'll find this, uh, this uh, story about Jonah. In fact, if you read it from verse, uh, it's uh, chapter 1. It's chapter 1 and verses 17. Uh, it says that for uh, the, the belly, Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. Let's read it from there. And I think it says um, in verses uh, uh, 17. Uh, now, the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow Jonah. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. So, brothers and sisters, wherever you are, three days and three nights. So, Jesus Christ had to be in the heart, which means he had to die. Three days and three nights. He had to die. He had to be dead, totally dead, not alive. Dead. He had to be killed and be buried. And he had to take three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. So this is the, the point here. That's why many people that at that time when Jesus was preaching and even now do not know the Jesus of the Bible, Yeshua of the Bible, Messiah of the Bible, because they are speaking of Jesus Christ, but they don't know that it is a mystery revealed to saints. He is a mystery revealed to saints. So our first step in the key to understand the master plan of the salvation is to know Jesus Christ because he is the central point of our salvation. He is the central point of our salvation. So Jesus Christ of the Bible, we start by knowing that Jesus Christ had to give one sign. Three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. And then now we will ask ourselves now. That's what does it mean by three days and three nights? 
Is it part of the day? Is it part of the night? Does, do we care about these three days and three nights? What does this day and night mean? Those are the questions that should linger in our minds. So when we go here to um, uh, the book of John, because we want to see if how many hours makes a day, how many hours make a day. Now, let's, let's go to John, John chapter 11, and I think verses 9. Jesus answered, are there not 12 hours in the day? Are there not 12 hours in the day? If anyone walks in the day, he does not stumble because he sees the light of this world. So, look at that. There are 12 hours in the day. 12 hours in the day. So, if we are talking about three days, then we are talking of 12 times 3, and that is 36 hours. Then we are when we are talking about uh, three nights, then we are talking about 12 times 3, which is 36 hours. So when Jesus said that three days and three nights, then what he meant was 72 hours. You see, Jesus was a mystery. And, and in fact, most people, the learned people, those, who, those people who have studied the doctor, they have doctors of divinity. They have gone to so very many, many institutions of learning to study theology. Do not know the Jesus of the Bible. That Jesus of the Bible has been revealed only to the saints. Has been revealed to the Gentiles. And is the hope of glory. And let me tell you, the resurrection of Jesus Christ makes us know, have hope. It is the hope in us. It is the hope of glory. The resurrection of Jesus Christ is the hope. Because we say that uh, in the book of Romans, if you read the book of Romans, let us go there, Romans 5. And I think uh, uh, if you go to Romans 5... Uh, uh, we we'll find that in verse 10, for if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son. Reconciliation uh, was done through the death of Yeshua. So that is how reconciliation was done. But now here, look at this. Much more, having been reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. You, you see? We shall be saved by his life. So that is why Paul, uh, the apostle, uh, wrote a letter to the Corinthians. And I think he preached about resurrection. He preached about resurrection. In 1 Corinthians 15, we call it resurrection chapter. And, uh, that's how I usually call it. And it says here, uh, let's, if you start from verses 12, that now if Christ is preached that he has been raised from the dead, how do some among you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? So when Jesus was saying that I will take three days and three nights in the heart of the earth, what he meant was that him as the Messiah, he will be raised from the dead. He will defeat death after three days and three nights. That one will be the proof that he is the Messiah. That is the proof that he is the Messiah, the firstborn from the dead. And through his life, we are saved. So you see here. So this, this is what we. This is the, the, we have to understand that Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and our Savior, is saving us through His life. So we now see here that uh, the Bible says, uh, as it continues uh, in the same chapter, in verses thirteen. But if there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ is not risen. You see. 
Then 14, and if Christ is not risen, then our preaching is empty and your faith is also empty. Yes. And we are found false witnesses of Yahweh because we have testified of God that he is raised he raised up Christ whom he has not raised uh, raised raise up if in fact the dead do not rise for if the dead do not rise then Messiah is not risen mm -hmm. you see for if the dead if Christ is not risen then we are told in verse 17 that and if Christ is not risen, your faith is futile. You are in, still in your sins. You see that? So that is why we have to start. The first step is to know Christ. The first step is to know Christ. We should know the Christ of the Bible. That there is a sign that he gave. A sign that he has defeated death. A sign that makes him uh, have preeminence over all of us. A sign that is the firstborn from the dead. A sign that is the first of first fruit, first of the first fruit. So we should know Christ. So I say, brothers and sisters, we should know our Messiah, our Christ, our Savior. Because we have been told that that is eternal life. The eternal life is to know God and Jesus Christ. So we will enjoy this as we continue in the next series. Then we will go and see whether, how, how can we know that Jesus Christ is the Messiah. We will continue there and we will enjoy part of it. So stay tuned. Subscribe there. So that when I upload another video, you will enjoy. So thank you very much. Wherever you are, may God bless you. I'm praying with you. Wherever you are, please, if you want to call me, maybe to ask me a question, my number is 0714800150. May God bless you wherever you are. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, have a blessed day. Have a blessed night wherever you are. Uh, let me pray with you. Father, our almighty Father, King of Salem, Jehovah Jireh, El Shaddai, the Father you have brought us, Father, you are Ebenezer. We thank you very much. We give you every glory. We magnify your name. We gratify your name. Father, may you extend your love and to all the people who have listened to this wonderful and beautiful message father be with them let your glory shine your shakina glory let your love prevails let people glorify you let your will be done here father let your kingdom come and your will be done here on earth as it is done in heaven father i pray for those who are teaching us the word of god i pray for our pastors I pray for our spiritual leaders. I pray, Father, for all those who are in the hostel. Father, extend your love to them. May you bless them, Father, and uh, so that they may understand you so very much. And God, uh, have mercy upon us. Forgive us our sin. For I pray, trusting and believing in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, uh, wherever you are, if you maybe you want to get more information, you may check. Uh, our website that is uh, Light on the Rock, www Light on the Rock. Uh, you will find a lot of blogs there. You will find uh, good videos there. You will find a very uh, a wonderful and beautiful teachings uh, from uh, our spiritual leader uh, that is uh, Philip W. Shield uh, from America. And maybe also other, inf we will also upload many more other. Uh, Swahili teachings. So God bless you. Thank you. Let us meet again.